get ready to get ready. Coming to you live from the MFG studios in the heart of America's summer golf capital. We help you play better golf. It's time to get your game on and take it deep. This is the Mike Fay Golf Show. Here's your host, Mike Fay. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Mike Fay Golf Show. We are very excited that you joined us today. We've got uh, Mr. Jason Hellman. How are you doing, Jay? I'm great, Mike. How are you? Good. One of Canada's best golf coaches, for sure. And our very special guest is Lisa Vlusik. How are you doing, Lisa? Great. Thanks for having me on, Mike. Uh, we all know her online as Lisa Longball, one of the longest <laughs> hitters in the world. Pretty excited to have her on today. We're going to chat about all kinds of stuff. Seven-time Canadian Long Drive Women's Champion. Wow. Yeah, it's it's awesome. You know, it's it's you know it's it's so fun to step on the tee and uh, to kind of you know hit that great bomb off the tee and then know you can reach a par five in two. There's there's nothing like that feeling. It's so much fun. So <laughs> I'm sitting in my golf shop at Boyne this fall, and I open up Golf Tips magazine, and who do I see on the cover? Seriously, Mike, you were the one who told me. I, I knew that Mike. I, I knew that Golf Tips magazine was doing a, a feature on me or a, an article on me. Uh, Andrew Penner wrote it, and uh, it, it, was, it wasn't until you sent me the picture of your Golf Tips magazine. I guess you have it as a subscription, and that I, I they made me the cover story. I was absolutely over the moon. It was so exciting. It was cool. I I opened that and I said, I know her. That's cool. Really, <laughs> really cool. It, you know what's really cool, Mike, is I've had people from all across North America, Los Angeles, New York, Boston, Toronto, Saskatchewan, uh, you know, Dallas, send me pictures uh, in, in uh, bookstores, Barnes & Noble, Chapters, Indigo, uh, Airplane Magazine Racks, where they're holding my magazine. So it's been, and it continues to happen, so it's been pretty darn cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good piece, so you guys should Thank check you. it out. Okay, let's talk about your upcoming Golf Channel appearance. What's going on with yeah. that? Yeah. So this is exciting. So uh, the world, uh, our World Long Drive Federation is right. We're run by the Golf Channel now, as of two years ago, and they've done a spectacular job. They've really put a lot of uh, resources and funds into Long Drive, um, and has just it's just been really exciting. October is branded as Long Drive Month, and they've decided to do a player summit. So a select group of Long Drivers uh, have been invited down to Orlando, uh, January twelfth to fourteenth, uh, where we'll we'll sit down. We're going to have talks about a Long Drive, the future of Long Drive. We'll do some media training. Training, and then also film some promotional spots uh, to be aired throughout the year uh, to build up excitement for the World Long Drive Championships, which again will be held in October 2017. We've been in Thackerville, Oklahoma the last two years, so I'm assuming we're still there, but who knows? Uh, there could be a big change this year. So we're going to see you on the Golf Channel with the with the event then. That's cool. Yes. Yeah, so I, I'm really excited to be down there and, and have an opportunity to, to, to film and shoot something, uh, again, promoting this great sport of long drive. So what's the, what's the process? What's the format this year for the women's division of the world? This was really interesting, actually, Mike and Jason. They did something very different for our division, and at first I wasn't too sure about it. So what they did is they took all the competitors and they broke us into groups of four. Uh, there's always four hitters on the tee at any given time, same as the men's division. So there's slot one, two, three, and four. We all have numbered balls, again, corresponding to our slot number one through four, and we each have our own spotter, both on the tee box and in the grid. And uh, what's really cool is uh, they take the longest ball. We had three minutes this year, which was new. Normally we have two minutes and 45 seconds. Also new, we've also had only six balls the last few years. We had eight balls this year. Now you obviously don't have to hit them all. They just count the longest. And a few girls got left, like our world champion, Phyllis Meddy, in the first round, she definitely she didn't get to hit all her balls. So uh, because you start going through your pre-shot routine and if you don't practice timing yourself on the range, uh, you're going you're gonna to leave balls on the tee or missed opportunities potentially and so basically what happened is you were given points 200 points if you had the longest ball in your group of four 100 points for the second longest ball 50 for the third longest ball and 25 for the fourth longest ball so it was funny i had i think the fourth longest drive of the of all the women uh, in the, and i had only amassed i think 100 points after two rounds just based on how um on, on who i was competing against and at what times but it actually was very fair we hit against at at, at uh each we had five sets 
you hit against all the competitors by the time you ended the five sets. So it actually made it very fair. And then they took the top eight girls based on points and they started a fresh start final, which switched to match play. So the match play went one versus eight, two versus seven and so forth. And so uh, I ended up, so I was praying not to be in eighth place because then you're thinking, oh, great. Now I've got to uh, face the number one seed. So I was in the ideal spot of fifth place. And if it shows you how difficult the field was this year at the 2016 World Championships, Sandra Carlberg, four-time world champion, reigning world champion, most decorated female long driver in our sport, she was fourth. So it was Sandra and I head-to-head uh, in match play, and she got me by six yards. But you know what? I'll take that. Six yards from almost beating the, the reigning world uh, long drive champion to advance was, was pretty exciting. So I, I ended up fifth in the world this year. That's awesome. Very, very Thank you. Cool. So let's chat a little bit about this new venture you have going on uh, your website, I see. With uh, yes. videos, oh. right? You know... You know what, Mike and Jay, I've been to, I, I asked so many times. I do a lot of clinics uh, where I, uh, I, I've been on the PGA Tour, the Champions Tour, that I do one-hour clinics, 45 minutes to one-hour clinics that are uh, you know really entertaining, but most importantly, educational. I, I talk about how to hit the ball longer, straighter, and better. And uh, so I, I touch on all aspects from stance to ball position. And people always ask me, Lisa, you're five foot six and three quarters, yet you can hit it the length of three and a half NFL football fields. What's your secret? So after my clinics, people kept saying, oh, I wish I had that on video. And so finally, finally this past year, I finally filmed it. And I, it was such, it was a big, big project. And I'm so proud and excited uh, that I just launched it. It's a soft launch right now, uh, just in time for Christmas. And I'll do my big launch in the spring, probably just after the Masters. Very, very cool. Glad you put those out. Good. Thank That's you. Super. All right. We want to have you join us today for a little roundtable discussion uh, since you're on the show. And we want to talk uh, about, uh, first off, how important is it, uh, you know, to have a good winter conditioning programming? Mm. Right now, it's the, uh, we're recording this, the end of December. What are you doing right yeah. now? What are you doing well, to get ready? Uh, uh I gave myself one week. So after World Championships, I gave myself one week off, kind of I can eat whatever I want, not, you know, take some time. And then it was, this is the, the most important time, in my opinion, uh, preparing for, for 2017. So this is when I hit the gym hard because now I don't have to worry if I have that lactic acid buildup and sore muscles because I'm trying to really work on my strength and conditioning. So I uh, usually, I start off with a, a program like P90X. Uh, I work out six days a week, uh, anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Um, that works on all aspects of fitness from, you know, I, I do yoga, plyometrics, uh, strength training in both arms, legs, um, also uh, car some cardiovascular side, and then a lot of stretching. Stretching and rolling, I cannot say enough about foam rolling. I just believe that everyone, uh, uh, regardless if you're working out or not, the foam rolling will really help you uh, have your muscles be more pliable. Uh, again, you'll have more flexibility and you won't be as prone to, to injury. So this is the key time now, Mike, for all golfers who want to, to want to hit it longer, better next year, definitely uh, hit the gym. This is the time to do it. You're right. Uh, I'm putting my players yeah. through TPI, all those kinds of things, because our season's so short here in northern Michigan yeah. like it is up by you. Um, you know, you want yeah. to play your best, right? And uh, Absolutely. getting everybody ready. What are we doing, Jay? Yeah. What do you think is important about a winter conditioning program? Yeah, same thing. Uh, I could sort of echo uh, Lisa's uh, comments. Uh, it's important to get people – they need, they need to be aware that it's not just golf swing all the time. Uh, and in the off season, they have to make sure that they're going to address any issues um, weakness wise that, um, you know, need to be obviously addressed in, in regards to strength and conditioning. And if they do want to hit longer or, you know, I get people to work both sides of their bodies. A lot of, a lot of people don't do that. They just, you know, work on their one side and they never like even hitting balls left-handed and right-handed. Now I'm left-handed, but I can still swing right-handed pretty decent uh and that's that's you know kind of kind of critical so um um to developing uh and and working things out uh, so i got my players on um in the winter time i'm at a peak performance and, and a golf dome here um to, to make sure that uh you know we address all those issues strength and strength and conditioning conditioning wise and flexibility as well um i'm a firm proponent of mobility so it's, it's more important to be mobile than it is to be super strong. Like there's lots of smaller people that can hit it really far. Like Lisa's five, six and yeah. she bombs it. 
So, and I had a, another tour player when I was, uh, I guess he was six, maybe seven years ago. He was, he was a smaller guy too, and he could still crush it out there like 300 yards. And he was five foot five, uh, 140 pounds. So it's not, it's, it's, it's how you, how you're efficient, not necessarily just, you know, brute strength. Uh, so conditioning and, and, uh, working out and, and then maintaining, maintaining that in season is a little bit more critical where you do a little bit of cardio because you're walking the golf course a lot if you're playing tournament golf. So those things, you know, you would just sort of bring it down and, and, and work really hard in the, in the winter on, on that and, uh, address your issues and then, you know, go a little bit, uh, later on it in, in season so you don't again have sore muscles where you're trying to swing and I would like to add, you know, the one interesting thing, um, I definitely agree with that mobility. It's the reason I can hit the ball so far is my ability to make a good turn. It's flexibility. That's why I hit the balls so long. Uh, but part two of why I can hit it long is, is leg strength. As soon as people find out I'm a long driver, the first thing they do is they, they grab my pipe and they're like, oh, Lisa, two tickets to the gun show. And it has nothing to do with arm strength. I will beat guys all day long that are six foot four, 240 pounds because they're all arms and I'm legs and core. So if you're going to focus Focus on anything this season, golfers. Really work on leg strength, squats, lunges, um, uh, hamstrings, glutes are so important, and then also core strength. Anything to develop your core and your oblique muscles. Those are your turning muscles. So again, anything to work on that is absolutely critical. And then flexibility. Yoga is is a fantastic way to to work on that mobility and flexibility as well. Yeah, we got to get moving, right? That's a big thing exactly. for us guys up here. I mean, there's a whole bunch of snow outside. But getting moving yeah. is so important to making your game better. And I'm, I'm telling you, those people, right, Jay, that we coach in the wintertime get so much better in the summer and they play so much better, right? Yeah, yeah the thing is you want to make sure that you're, you have a plan together to actually work harder in the winter so you don't have to work as hard in the summer and you can just play golf rather than try and relearn something. So this is a time to address any swing issues, physical yeah. issues, so that – you know, you don't have to come out in April and say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to learn now. You know, well, and that's what I have to piggyback on you, Jason. You know, here I've got two award-winning coaches with both you, Jason and Mike. Uh, but I have to tell you, if you're going to go through a swing change, do it in the winter. Because what happens is if you go through a massive swing change in your, in your golf season, uh, and as you said, Mike, we have such short seasons where you live and up here in Canada, we want to maximize that time. So if you're going through a swing change, what we do on the golf course is if things aren't going great, we end up reverting to our bad habits. Well, right now we're not physically able to go onto a golf course. So if you're going to do that change, this is the time to put into that, put that time into the, into the range, whether it's on simulators in, in golf domes, I've got a great heated stall here. In, we've got the golf Canada center here in Calgary up to about minus 12, 13. Uh, then I feel like a warm chickadee under there. So I really encourage people to see their golf coaches, see their PGA of Canada and PGA of America instructors to, uh, to get those lessons. Yeah. It's so important to get working on your game. You, you, progress but not near as quickly as if you could during the winter time for sure Absolutely. okay let's talk about uh something that's pretty important is hitting the golf ball on the center of your club face hitting it on the sweet spot what do you think jay what are some of the keys to get people to hit it more on the center so that they can hit it as far as as they can well over the course of my years of coaching and teaching um literally the the main thing that everyone thinks is club speed, all right? I must have to have cl more club head speed to hit it farther. Now, that does make sense, but if you can't find the middle of the club face hitting it on the toe or the heel at 110 or 15 miles an hour, it's still going to make you not hit it as far. I've done lots of research and testing on TrackMan and, you know, uh, flight scopes and seen many swings that are at a slower club head speed, but they find the middle of the club face easier at a slower rate and they end up hitting the golf ball farther so generally we want to make sure that you can find your sequence so when the sequence is broken you you're going to hit it more on the toe or the heel because you're you're more erratic and you're trying too hard with different pieces of your body so i would i would say i'm not trying to say slow your club head speed down but we definitely need to smooth it out so i don't like the word slow at all i want you to be fast but i want you to be efficiently fast um, according to the sequence that you can move in so once they find that, um, then they can, you know, maximize, um, you know, finding the sweet spot a lot easier and they get better results. So that's the way I've sort of approached it over the years is that instead of trying to swing 115 miles an hour, can you do 109 or 108 
or 105, or even just 100, just depending on the level of player. But those are the key factors that i found over the years that help people find the middle a lot easier when I get them to smooth it out. And I've used the ZEP sensor before many times with this, and their practice swings, and, and tons of people, oh, my practice swing is perfect. But when the ball's there, it totally changes. So on average, it's about 8 to 12 miles an hour faster when the ball is present. Uh, so that is a huge significance um, versus, you know, three or four miles an hour. And if we're counting uh, three, three yards uh, for every one mile per hour uh, on average, um, then you're going to have what, four miles an hour is 12 yards, right? So, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things that I see using TrackMan a lot is I'll have a player try to hit one real smooth out there and they'll hit it in the center of the club face and then I'll try and have them hit it as hard as they can <laughs> and see what happens. And their hard as they can isn't much faster than smooth. And that, you know, that's a big point. What do you do, Lisa? How, how do you, let's say yeah. you're having a problem one day and you're whacking it off the toe all the time. Or hitting yeah. it in the heel and not hitting it solid. What do you do? Yeah. Well, actually, just just to, to, to talk about two of the things that uh, both of you spoke about, uh, one of the things is uh, just even being aware of it. You know, I started using two years ago, I started using foot spray on my, uh, on my driver. And what a difference. I think just for having golfers being aware of where I check my driver every single time I hit it in a practice session, Boom, I'm checking the face of my driver. I want to see where on that club face I hit it. And that is a routine for me. It is so important for long drive, not only just to hit it long, but to hit it straight as well. You know, you, if we can't hit the grid, you can be the longest out there. But if you're not hitting the grid, you're not you're not winning. And so, so important. So, again, for those people who aren't familiar with this technique, just use a, a can of foot spray, I, Dr. Scholl's, whatever brand you can get out at your local pharmacy, Walmart, wherever. Spray a light mist on your on your driver. You can also do this on your irons or all your other hybrids, uh, fairy woods and then strike the ball and take a peek where are you hitting it and is that consistent uh, are you consistently hitting it in the same spot are you always off the toe are you always off the heel or are you all over the face because that's going to give you some feedback as to let's say you're always off the toe you know maybe maybe you're standing too far away from the ball you know perhaps it's a, you know so you can start to just diagnose where it is in your swing that you have these these issues but i think truly looking at your face and, and every single time thinking about it and then all you take is a damp cloth give it a wipe. Like I know some people use duct tape, but I, that changes the properties of your face and it leaves a sticky residue. So I'm, I'm, I'm a much uh, bigger fan of having that, uh, having that foot spray. And then you talked about Mike, people trying to swing as hard as they can. My big thing is when people are trying to swing as hard as humanly possible, what happens is their, their muscles tighten up and their grip pressure tightens up. And the one thing in long drive, if you ever ask, if you ask Joe Miller, our world long drive champion right now, one of his best tips, I guarantee you he'll tell you soft hands, relaxed hands. Tension is a club head speed killer. So you, we want to have relaxed, supple hands. You want, you create speed through the core, not through your hands and your arms and your forearms, because that's just going to kill your speed and then also lead to errant shots that's amazing how how much you know you would think you would feel stronger yeah. faster when you grip harder but it's the opposite and it's uh, unbelievable how much different it is when you can loosen up and get moving absolutely um, yeah, yeah absolutely and that just goes back to one of the misconceptions that people have is that they think it's upper body strength that creates you know power and speed right yeah you're right you're right. It's a core combination. Core and legs. Core and legs. Yeah. Yeah. A combination Loose. of things that uh, yeah. get players to hit the ball farther. Speaking of that, what's a couple of drills that you do to try and increase your distance? Or when you're looking at your numbers, Lisa, you know, yeah. and you say, hey, you know, hey, I'm three, five, you know, right now where you are, being one yeah. of the best players in the world hitting the ball, you're probably saying, oh, I'm three yards off, five yards off here and there. From what Six I yards this do. year. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, absolutely. So where? Do, yeah. So if I'm looking, if I'm looking, to, you know, to improve, like my center face contact, that is imperative. And right now, you, I, I basically hit ball on top of ball on ball. So I know my center face contact is great right now. But I'm constantly monitoring that. But so if I want some more speed, I need a, two things. I need a really great turn. So I need to make sure I'm maximizing my turn. Sometimes I get really excited in my golf swing that before I've let myself fully finish my backswing, I'm already transitioning into my downswing. So for me. 
five to be very, a really great swing thought for me is to be slow and patient in my backswing. Very slow, slow and patient. Let it wind up. Let myself create coil. It's that coil that will create the distance. And then once I get to that top of that backswing, really starting that downswing with that, that lead hip. For me, it's my lead hip, my lead pocket, my guts, my belt buckle, whatever swing thought it is for golfers to get that. Because often what we'll see with players, especially gentlemen who are quite strong in their upper body, it's that back shoulder. They get that back shoulder in and then that you can get that pull hook coming in and uh, just some nasty stuff happening there. So again, if I'm looking for more distance, any way to increase my turn in my backswing, any way to increase that turn and to create a more powerful downswing. So for me, that's really working on uh, working on building strength in my oblique muscles, my glutes, um, and, and then also working with an instructor. I cannot say that enough. I work with Paul Horton uh, uh, here in Calgary, Alberta, and he's Stephen Ames, swing coach. And you have to have that combination. People think they can do it on their own at the range. You need to have instruction. And, and for women, I always hear women, their husbands, even if they're single digit handicaps, taking lessons from their husbands, you know what, even single digit handicaps have swing faults, or maybe they're not going to, they, they know what they do properly, but they can't necessarily explain it to you. And so for instance, you'll hear women, you'll hear a gentleman tell a woman all the time, you know, keep your head down. So, you know, you'll see her tuck her head down her chin into her chest to make her golf swing because if she's topped the ball, well, she's topped the ball because she's lifted her torso or her upper body come out of her posture, not because she lifted her head up and down. So, you, so again, the, the gentleman's trying to help her, but it's, it's not the right advice. So when I'm trying to really add distance, it's that combination of working on that strength, really be patient, but seeing my swing, my, my swing coach, seeing you, we, we all, if you want to get better, you simply need to have expert instruction. You know, it, keep your head down. So uh, really hurt oh. a lot of things, hasn't it, Jay? Oh it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, but we yeah. hear it. I hear it all the time. Forever, never run to yeah. that forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We know, we know. We're trying to help any kind because it's very loving. But from a yeah. golf coach perspective, uh, it's Worst nice advice. it gets us a lot more clients, doesn't it, Jay? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's no doubt. What do you think about increasing distance and and hitting ball solid? We know we have to hit it on the center of the face. Increasing distance. I uh, absolutely agree with everything that Lisa's saying. Yeah, yeah um, I think, um, you know, a couple of other things that we could touch on is just, you know, pressure into the ground and using the ground efficiently, you know, because it goes back to, you know, the misconception of trying to use the upper body. They forget to use their lower body. So, you know, there's a certain amount of vertical force that, you know, we can we can use, but people don't use it effectively. So, I tend to lean, you know, more on footwork at the beginning if someone wants to hit it farther to make sure that they're very stable and work my way up to, you know, whatever they need to do um, correction-wise in, in their golf swing. But uh, generally, that's where I start is I start on footwork, groundwork, and um, get them to, you know, be more anchored into the ground. Yeah. And a great little tip I do for that, Jason, uh, Paul Horton taught me this, is that right before I swing, he has me pretend like I'm standing on a fit ball. So I'll take my toes uh, and I'll, I'll actually feel like I'm standing on a rounded object. And then that engages my glutes and my hamstrings. And that makes me feel very connected to the ground. So, and I am someone who uses ground forces. I was self-taught uh, to begin with. So if you watch, if anyone ever watches my swing uh, on a YouTube video or whatever, you'll see that I literally come off my feet, like up onto my toes, much like a Lexi Thompson or a Bubba Watson or a Laura Davies if we're going old school. Yeah. And uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily teach that, but I definitely use what Jason's saying, ground forces is what helps me get that distance. Well, it's, it's a reaction, right? I mean, it's nothing yeah. that you're trying to do. It just happens because that's the way no. it is. So, yeah, it's yeah. a by, it's a byproduct of you know. Yes, you don't try to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Byproduct of, of your movement and and actually being able to move faster, right? Uh, and then you can't control that speed, so you end up getting up on your toes. Yeah. And I mean, most LPGA players are toe heel players anyway, so the pressure goes to their toes. I'm seeing less now, um, but you know, for the most part, a lot of them are you know they get a weight on the pressure on the toe, um, and then they snap it back to their heel now. Generally, with ladies, that's just because of you know their center of mass isn't heavy enough to keep them on the ground, you know, for the speed that they're they're creating. So that's that's a physical thing. Uh, but you know, those are the things I, I generally work on is is working on groundwork and footwork first, and then we work on whatever we need to work on after that. Well, very very cool. Thanks so much for joining us, Lisa. Um, and coming. Thanks on for today. having me, Mike and Jason. Absolutely. Thanks, Lisa. 
Uh, how can people get in touch with you and get a hold of those videos on your website? And you also have golf yes. schools too, right? You're doing golf schools. I do, yeah. So uh, my, my website is www.lisalongball.com. And uh, from there, you can access my instructional video. Uh, you can also my golf schools. So I do golf schools uh, here in Calgary. I always hire PGA of Canada instructors to work with me because I am not a PGA of Canada instructor. Uh, but I have a lot of tips I want to share. and th But that's why I also work with the pros. So we do. I do half and full day schools uh, here in Calgary. And then I also do a school uh, uh, in the United States. So I've got two schools running in Phoenix, actually, in February. So one the last week of February and one the first week of March uh, out of the w uh, Wigwam Resort, which I'm excited uh, to go back. And I've done one in Vegas as well. And this is my third year doing them in uh, stateside. Very, cool. very cool. Check her out on the Golf Channel, too, next in January, right? It's gonna be yeah, it's they January. should. So the promo ads should start airing soon after that. Yep. Very, very your morning cool. drive. Is, is it the morning drive show you're on? Uh, no, so I don't think it's going to be, I think what they're doing, from what I understand, is they're filming segments that are perhaps little commercials. And so they'll be using it, uh, the commercials, uh, they'll create some, uh, or maybe even tips. Maybe we will be filming some tips that they'll use on Morning Drive or other other Golf Channel segments it is, is, a, is a thought. So they haven't quite given us those details yet, but definitely lots of promo ads that will run uh, from January all the way to October. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Well, enjoy the rest of your winter, guys. Stay warm and uh, keep swinging. Uh, Jason, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the PGA show where we can uh, celebrate your national award. Thank you. Yes, very You're good. Congratulations, Jay. Uh, that is thanks, so Mike. cool. Very, very good. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of the Mike Fay Golf Show. And you can follow us online just about everywhere, right, Jay? So yeah. have a super duper day. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mike Fay Golf Show. This has been a Mike Fay Golf production. Follow us today on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are Mike, Mike Fay Golf. Golf, Team MFG.